This is my small talk on a small project I made called Tileset.net. In video games, tilesets are a big deal. A huge, expensive deal. An expansive, expensive deal. Players expect longer games nowadays, and with that length comes the need for variation. So you don't make them walk in the same never-ending grind of the exact same looking world. Recent advances in neural networks have shown that CNNs are a legitimate solution to making large batches of not shabby art. Style transfer algorithms and colorizers show that, given enough data and testing, a computer can make something good. This is tileset.net. The goal is for it to take in images from video games, uh, concept art, to make a fitting tile set. And perhaps more? Tileset.net is based on ConvNet, talked about in the paper cited in Citation 1. Basically, it uh, downscales this image down to a very small, almost a 5 pixels by 5 pixels, but with enough channels and filters that it is able to keep all the information, and then decodes it symmetrically, so that way it will be able to rebuild the same image with, well, in ConvNet's case, color, but in our case, we're actually going to be downscaling it a little bit. However, you'll also notice that mo many of the encoding layers are actually skipping down and going to the decoding layers. So what's that about? That's what was originally called a UNet, but the idea is that uh, the convolution neural network weights can actually learn whether or not they want to use the encoding layer on the same level, or they can use the encoded decoded section. That way, they can determine among themselves whether or not it's better to go deeper or not deeper. So that way, you can actually add m more depth, and the only thing you lose is time and not risk quality loss. So, tileset.net obviously is making tilesets, and the idea for these tilesets are for them to be 16-bit tilesets of a simple 3x3 three three block, as seen in the example before. Because of that, it will not have all the decoding layers. Instead, it will have several encoding layers and then four or five decoding layers. This example shows how important it is to actually decode further than the size of the tile set. We don't simply need to start from a large image and then scale down. We actually have to scale down to feature extraction, to the smallest bit, and then rebuild the image from those features. As with all machine learning, there is a lot of trial and error to find out the proper use of loss and compilers and, and filter sizes and everything. So. Here's just a small shout out to the hours and hours of hyperparameter finding. The data set did not exist from the beginning, so I had to build it all. Many of it was using Mario assets or assets that are free on open game art. It's awesome. This results in 146 images, 116 for training and 30 for validation to make sure that the network generalizes properly. In order to sort of pad out this obviously small data set, I flipped them horizontally, vertically, horizontally, and vertically, and I rotated it by 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. So this way I was able to multiply my data set size by six. Results? Well, let's see. Uh, oh. Variations are to give more data to drive cognitive results. And these results? Well, putting in this basic screenshot from Mario, which was not in the data set, yields average results potentially due to the small data set. And putting in cool pictures off the internet gives... Alpha tile sets are too simple or fuzzy and will need to be expanded and corrected by artists. However, this is a good starting point and I hope to be able to improve the generalization of tileset net by adding more data slowly. That is a time consuming issue and so I was not able to do it within the time allotted. However, I hope to see tileset.net's improvement in the future.